Good afternoon, Hope Center Ministry. It's Latasha McMiller here, and I am back today with Love Dare, the 40 Day Love Dare Challenge, and we are on day number 12. Day number 12 Love Lets the Other Win. Oh, I know that one sound like it could be a hard pill to swallow, but that's our challenge for today. Day number 12 Love Lets the Other Win. Philippians 2 and 4 says, do you merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the... I'm sorry, let's, let's try that again. Philippians 2 and 4 says, Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. If, you're, if you were to ask... If you were asked to name three areas where you and your spouse disagreed, you'd likely be able to do it without thinking very hard about it. You may even be able to produce a top 10 list if given a few more minutes. And sadly, unless someone at your house starts doing some giving in, the same issues that you're experiencing are going to keep popping up between you and your mate. Sadly, stubbornness comes as a standard feature on both the husband and wife models. Depending on your rights and opinions, is a foundational part of, of your nature and your makeup. That's just human. It's detrimental though inside a marriage inside of a marriage relationship and it steals away time and productivity. It can also cause great frustrations for the both of you. Granted, being stubborn is not always bad. Some things are worth standing up for and protecting. I'm gonna say that one again. Being stubborn is not always bad when it's something that you need to stand up for, stand up against, or protect, okay? Our priorities, morals, and obedience to God should be guarded with great effort. But too often we debate over piddling things, small little things like the color of a wall, the color to paint a wall, or the choice of a restaurant to go to. Other times, of course, the stakes are much higher. One of you would like to have more children. The other doesn't. One of you wants to go on a vacation with your extended family. The other one doesn't. One of you prefer, prefers homeschooling your children while the other doesn't. <laughs> one of you think it's time for marriage counseling or to get more involved in a church while the other doesn't. Though these issues may not come up every day, they will continue to resurface if they don't resurface if you don't do anything about them to make them go away. You never seem to get any closer to a resolution or compromise. The hills just keep digging, digging in and digging deeper. It's like driving with the parking brakes on. There's only one way to get beyond stalemates such as these, and that's by finding a word that's the opposite of stubbornness. <laughs> a word we first meet while discussing kindness. That word is willing. The opposite of stubbornness is willing. It's an attribute and it's also the spirit of cooperation that should penetrate our conversations. It's like a palm tree by the ocean that endures the greatest winds because it knows how to gracefully bend. And the one best example of this is Jesus Christ, as described in Philippians 2, 5, verse, uh, Philippians 2 and 5 through 11. Follow the progression of his selfless love. As God, he had every right to refuse becoming a man, yet he yielded and he did. Because he was willing, he had the right to be served by all of mankind, but he came to serve us instead. He had the right to live in peace and safety, but willingly laid down his life for our sins. He was even willing to endure the torture of the cross. He loved, cooperated, and was willing to do his father's will instead of his own. In light of this amazing testimony, the Bible applies to us, applies to us a one-sentence summary statement. Having this attitude... In yourselves, which was also in Christ, Je also in Christ Jesus, Philippians two and five, the attitude of willingness, flexibility, and humble submission. It means laying down for the good of others what you have the right to claim for yourself. 
All it takes for you to present, all it takes for your for your present arguments to continue is for both of you to stay entrenched and unbending. But the very moment one of you says, "I'm willing to give," I'm willing to give your way a try. The argument will be over, and though the and though the follow through may cost you a few moments of pride and discomfort, you have made a loving, lasting investment in your marriage. Yes, but then I'll look foolish. I'll lose the fight. I'll lose control. Well, you've already looked foolish if you have been bullheaded and refused to listen. You've already lost the fight by, take, by making this issue more important than your marriage and your spouse's sense of worth. You may have already lost emotional control by seeing things that got personal and hurt your mate. The wise and loving thing to do is to start approaching your disagreements with a willingness to not always insist on your own way. That's not to say your mate is necessarily right or being wise about a matter, but you are choosing to give strong consideration to their preference as a way of valuing them. In fact, your willingness to reconsider may also, also cause them to loosen their resistance for you and may even cause them to reconsider as well. So love's best advice comes from the Bible, which says that the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then is peaceable, is gentle, and willing to yield. That's James 3.17. Instead of treating your wife or husband like an enemy or someone to be guarded against, Start by treating them as your closest, most honored friend. Give their, word, give their words full weight. No, you won't always see eye to eye, and you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to be carbon copies of each other. If you were, one of you would be unnecessary. Two people who always share the same opinions and perspectives won't have any balance nor flavor to enhance the relationship. Rather, your differences are for listening to and learning from. Are you willing to bend to demonstrate your love for your spouse? Or are you refusing to give in because of pride? If it doesn't matter in the long run, especially in eternity, then giving up your rights will be a loving way to bring delight and honor to the one that you love. It will be likely to be good for you and for your marriage. Surrendering a battle may actually be the best way to a greater victory. Amen. Okay, so our love dare challenge today is demonstrate love by willingly choosing to give in to an area of disagreement between you and your spouse. Tell them you are putting their preference first. Okay, now in your journals or wherever you're jotting and taking notes on, your, on this love dare challenge, ask yourself this question. What issue did you choose? What issue did you choose? Question number two, what did giving in cost you? What did giving in cost you? And lastly but not least, how will this help you in the future? How will this help you in the future? So praise God, guys. Uh, as I always end my videos on this Love Dare Challenge, we are going to love on purpose. So love, 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 love on purpose, okay? I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.